This is a seventh grade math lesson to review order of operations in hopes that it helps us prepare to use some integer rules with our order of operations as well. So hopefully you have heard of an acronym before to help you order of operate help you with order of operation rules and again the sequence that they should happen in. Some people will call this gem does. If you notice that acronym helps you remember grouping symbols, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. I'm guessing most of our elementary students have come in with the idea of calling that PEMDAS. So what does that stand for? The P is for parentheses. The E is for exponents, whatever they may be. It doesn't have to be a power of three. It could be some different power here. M is for multiplication. And D is really division. And when I write PEMDAS, I really like to list it this way to remind you to go in order from left to right with multiplication and division. They are buddies. They happen on the same level. Also, addition, subtraction. Those, again, are buddies. They happen on the same level. They go in order from left to right. And you'll notice whether you use PEMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, is maybe the way you remember it, or whether you use GEMDAS. It does indicate here left to right in order when it comes to multiplication division, or when it comes in order for addition and subtraction, we go from left to right. And I like the color coding here, which didn't happen on your papers. So if you want to add some color to that so that you can see that those go together, that would be a great idea. Yeah. Again, this is a notes packet, so this is something you should keep safe. You might want to make sure your name, hour, and date's on the top. If you'll turn your paper to the next page, we want to practice some simplifying of expressions. And we want to apply these rules that we just looked at on the front page. We really want to do a quick review. And I want you to notice something. If you do a nice job with your simplifying, you'll always end up with what I call pizza. It kind of looks like a pizza slice here. Some people call this a cone. Some people call this an inverted triangle. Whatever you call it, this is really a nice indicator of line by line work. And it's required. So no shortcuts. We're going to use some line by line work for these. That way we cut down on errors when they get more complex. So this idea you can see happening over here. The original expression is shown. And the first thing they said to pay attention to is parentheses. It's a type of grouping symbol. So it comes from either gemdas or pemdas. And in parentheses, they saw addition. What I tend to do is draw a bracket or a brace around them showing I'm going to simplify 4 plus 5. And that's where I got the 9 from. I bring everything else down the way it was. And the rule that I used was parentheses, addition. So we'll call this our rule over here. This is our procedure or our step or our rule. Well, what should I do next? I took care of all the parentheses. This two in parentheses looks like it's just being housed for some reason. It doesn't have anything in parentheses that I can actually operate on or do. So next, I think of, whether I use PEMDAS or GEMDAS, exponents. There are some exponents here. Here it says three to the second power. Honestly, I like to show that in expanded form. So somewhere off to the side so that you don't ruin your line by line work, I would show three to the second power means three times three. And that will definitely get you nine. That's where this nine came from. And everything else stays the same. You bring everything else down. Were there any other exponents? The answer is no. So next I look for multiplication or division in order from left to right. Well, I notice there's some multiplication here. And there's also some multiplication here. So in order from left to right, I will take the first example, 9 times 4, and I will simplify it. 9 times 4 is 36. The next multiplication happens at the back here, and these happen on the same level, so it's okay to take this right now and deal with it in this step if you like. This really means multiplication. There's nothing in between this 9 and the parenthesis that indicates I need to multiply. 9 times 2 is, indeed, 18. That's where this piece comes from. And don't forget, there was a subtract 9 and an addition sign in the middle. We bring everything else down. The rule that we just used was multiplication, and we went from left to right. So write the rule off to the side as we go. The next thing we look at, well, I don't have any division, so I don't have to worry about that level of work anymore. Multiplication, division, check, those are done. How about addition or subtraction? Oh, there's subtraction and there's addition. So what's the rule say? It would say go in order from left to right. So the first thing I see is subtraction. That's what I'll do first. And 36 take away 9 is 27. And we bring down the plus 18. Well, when we're done, we only have one thing left to do. It's an addition step. And that's where we get this 45 from. 
I would encourage you to circle your final answer. Kind of makes it look like pepperoni. And again, if you did a nice job, you can start to see this idea of a pizza slice or an inverted triangle. We're using line by line work. You'll be required to do this to get full credit. Take a look at the next expression that you're given. Let's see if we can make it a little bit bigger for you. Here it says, 9 take away 2 to the third power. Well, let's see. If I think of PEMDAS or GEMDAS, I'll jot that down real quick. And I'm guessing PEMDAS is the one that we're more familiar with. But if I jot this down, I definitely want to remember my buddies. Multiplication and division are buddies on the same level, just like addition and subtraction. So, first of all, any parentheses? The answer is no. Any exponents? Yes. So actually, I want to show expanded form here. I could show 9 take away 2 times 2 times 2. Remember, the base is 2, the exponent is 3, so I show the base 3 times with multiplication. Next, I need to simplify those exponents, really, or that expanded form. So I'm looking at using exponent rules right now. And I could simplify one more time, just this piece of it. What is 2 times 2 times 2? The answer is 8. And we bring down that subtraction in the 9 out front we haven't used yet. So this is still a rule of exponents. Again, I just showed you expanded form real quickly. Well, the last step, the only operation I could possibly choose, jumps fast forward, past multiplication, past division, past addition, and straight to subtraction. What is 9 take away 8? The answer is 1. This pizza got a little flattened, but if you notice, it is an inverted triangle. That's our goal. Now, students have told me that my videos are pretty boring, so I brought you a joke today. What would you get if you crossed a giant ape with a game of table tennis? What would you get if you crossed a giant ape with a game of table tennis? King ping pong. Ha. All right, let's look at the next example. I'm going to jot myself a quick reminder, whether you say PEMDAS or GEMDAS, let's try the GEMDAS way this way, or this time. I'm going to remember to show multiplication and division from left to right and addition and subtraction in order from left to right, however they appear in the problem. Are there any grouping symbols, also known as parentheses or brackets or braces? Well, I see some parentheses here. 7 plus 8, that's what I'll do first. 7 plus 8 is 15, and I need to bring everything else down. What rule did we just use? Parentheses. And we really had to add in parentheses. Next, any other grouping symbols? No. Any exponents this time? No. How about multiplication or division? Yes. If you notice right here, I do have some multiplication. 15 times 4. Well, 4 times 10 is 40, 4 times 5 is 20. If I combine those, I'll get an answer of 60. And I need to remember to bring everything else down. Well, fast forward, there's no division. There's no addition. Well, unless maybe you change a minus to a plus, change the sign of next, or add the opposite. So the last thing I do, different sign subtract, or just subtraction. Well, 72 take away 60, or 72... Uh, minus 60 or plus a negative 60 would get me 12. Would that be positive or negative? Who's the farther number? Who's farther from zero? The positives or the negatives? The positives. 12 is our answer. I forgot to tell you a rule in here. It looks like we used subtraction a minute ago. And the last thing we did, I feel like that's not right. Actually, a minute ago, we took care of multiplication, didn't we? Aha, forgot to write it. And now I can't spell it either. That might be just as funny as my joke. And the last thing we did was subtraction. Or because we're familiar with these rules, we might say different signs subtract. All right, let's take a look at number three. Again, I'm going to jot down PEMDAS or some quick reminder of my order of operation steps. So, are there any parentheses? No. Are there any exponents? Sure are. So maybe I'm going to show you 2 to the third power really means 2 times 2 times 2. And notice I'm trying this off to the side this time so that I don't ruin my beautiful pizza. 
my nice organization that makes a cone or a funnel or an upside down slice. And you don't really have to draw those lines. We just expect to see that in your work. Well, two times two is four times two again is eight. I'm going to take this two to the third and replace it. I'm going to replace it with an eight and everything else stays the same. Well, there are no more exponents, so I can cross that off. Is there any multiplication or division in order from left to right? The answer is yes, there's multiplication happening right here. So what is four times eight? The answer is 32 and everything else stays the same. Well, no more multiplication or division, but I'm also reminded I keep forgetting to write down my rules here. So what did I just use first? Exponents. There were no parentheses, so we used exponents first. What did we use next? Multiplication. What came next? Well, next I see I have subtraction and addition. And if you remember, those are those buddies that happen on the same level. They go in order from left to right. So will I subtract or will I add first? The answer is subtract. You are allowed to change a minus to a plus, change a sign of next, or just think about this as a subtraction that we're familiar with. We'd get 32 and plus 7 at the back. What did we just do? Subtraction. Last step. Looks like I have 32 plus 7. That looks like a rule of addition. So no multiplication division to deal with. Addition, subtraction, in order from left to right. Here we go. Looks like 39 is a good answer. Did we end up with that inverted shape, that inverted triangle, that pizza? Absolutely. And that's because we're doing line by line work. I don't want you to store too much in your heads when we do these because they get so complex that it's important to be able to communicate each step along the way. Last one, number four. Okay, let's jot down Jim does real quickly. And remember your partners or buddies here. Are there any grouping symbols for this G? Oh yeah, I see parentheses. We need to do what's inside first. But this gets a little bit tricky because there's a couple things to do in here this time. We have exponents, two to the third power, and a takeaway six. So even within the grouping symbols, I have to think about this whole stretch of the rules. I would take care of exponents first within those grouping symbols. And then I take care of multiplication or division or addition subtraction next. So it looks like this exponent has to happen first. Well, two to the third power we've worked out a few times, but let's go ahead and jot it down real quick. Means two times two times two. This is called expanded form, and we'll still get a great answer of eight. Let's do a rewrite. Everything stays the same. But in parentheses, I can simplify that little piece of two to the third and write it as eight. Take away six. And that whole quantity is squared. Am I done with parentheses yet? Or the G, the grouping that I need to look at first? The answer is no, there's more grouping to be done. So we could write, first thing we did was grouping. And really what we did in the grouping was exponents. Oops, I wrote my gem does too close, but it'll work. So the next thing in parentheses we need to take care of or in my grouping symbols is a subtraction. So it's grouping again, and it's subtraction. Notice I keep those parentheses on, oops, just the one subtraction until we're done with all the operations inside. So let's see what happens here. 3 plus 7 stays the same, and 8 take away 6 is 2. Well, it seems like I'm done with the operations inside, and I want to take off the parentheses, but I notice something. There's nothing between the 7 and the parentheses, and there's an exponent kind of applied to whatever I get from my answer here, from the parentheses themselves. I think I'm going to keep those there a minute, with the exponent of 2, or to the second power. Oh, finally, my grouping symbols are really done. I can't do anything with this 2 within the parentheses itself. So let's move on to exponents. Oh, there is an exponent to handle. In fact, it's sitting back here. It says 2 to the second power. Well, that really means, in expanded form, 2 times 2, which will get us 4. So I'm going to copy this down the way it was, but I'm going to replace this 2 to the second power with 4. Notice, if you don't put this in parentheses, it starts to look like 74. So you have to show somehow that something's still happening here. We still have to house that number some way, shape, or form. The rule we just used to get to this line of work, exponents. Next, I have addition, or what is this sitting here? If you remember, sometimes I joke about putting on your math goggles. There's secretly multiplication happening between any number and a parenthesis. 
So this is a multiplication. Well, my exponents are done. Multiplication or division should come next. That means I'm going to take the 7 times 4. 7 times 4 is 28, and I still have this 3 being added to it out front. The rule I just used was multiplication. And I knew that because I saw those parentheses right next to the number preceding. Well, last rule. Looks like I have to add, so I'm going to use a rule of addition. And 3 plus 28 is actually... Hmm, 31. Did we make that nice inverted triangle? Does it look like pizza? It should. We did a nice job of line by line work. Next up, it's your turn. You get to try the 4x4 four four puzzle. So I want to kind of show you what that might look like. I have a couple of pieces here that I've cut out. Um, the first one says piece A, and I think we all should probably start with piece A. So if you notice, every single puzzle piece, there are, are um, 16 pieces all together. Every single puzzle piece has two problems on it, two expressions that we need to simplify. So this one has an expression at the top and one on the side. Um, there are some rules here that it says we should follow. I don't know if we can fit this on the screen or not, but it says cut the squares apart, which I've already done for you. We're going to simplify each expression on a separate sheet of paper and write each answer below the printed expression. And when I'm done, I get to lay the 16 small squares side by side so that each answer matches up to the same number printed on another square. You should form a new 4x4 four four square. So let's take a look at this. For part A, I do expect you to do all work on lined paper. So I'll try to show you what I mean by that just to get you started. So this is my puzzle of order of operations. Sometimes I, sometimes I call that ooh. Okay, your name, date, and hour should be on here. And we're going to write down, this is card A, and there are going to be two parts to it. So the first one says 4 times 3 plus 8 divided by 2. Again, remember pizza style. We have to solve this using line by line work. And I notice there's multiplication and division as my first steps, and I go in order from left to right. So 4 times 3 is 12, and I could bring down the plus 8 and divide by 2. Next I see this division that needs to happen. So 12 plus, what is 8 divided by 2? The answer is 4. And the last step looks like addition, so 12 plus 4 gets me 16. We'll circle it to show it's our answer, and we'll also take our little card here, and we would write 16 right underneath here. We'd write 16 underneath that expression so that we know that's equivalent. Uh, next up, there's another part for part A, another expression that needs to be simplified. So I'll turn this for a quick minute. It says 6 take away 2 times 1 plus 6. Make sure we copy them correctly. Sometimes I'm guilty of doing that wrong and then things go really crazy. So first, I do see parentheses and in PEMDAS parentheses come first. So 6 take away 2 happens first and I'll get 4 times 1 plus 6. Everything else stays the same. Well, if you think of PEMDAS, there are no exponents, but there is multiplication or division. So 4 times 1 gets me 4. And plus 6 at the back needs to come down. Uh, last step, looks like an addition. 4 plus 6 is 10. Take this great answer and write it right underneath this expression. Next, you're going to start looking for um, another expression or another card that has the same great answers. Meaning that, hmm, well, this isn't a good example, but if this said 10 instead of 3, then these would be touching, and I'd start to build my square or my puzzle back up. Or if instead of 28, this said 16, then I'd know that these sides touch. But these can't touch because the answer here doesn't match this expression. Your job is to complete, let's see here, all 16 cards, and there are two problems on each card, so all 32 problems. And you need to make sure that you letter them as you go so that I can tell what they came from. So again, once I find the answers of 16 and 10, I can start to connect my puzzle. I won't glue anything down yet. I'm just going to keep good track and record my answers here, especially if something goes wrong. Then I don't have to worry about peeling things up or trying again. With that, it's your turn to practice your order of operations with your partner. When you're done, we should have a 4x4 four four square. If we don't have time to finish today, whatever cards are undone, we'll have you just copy down the problems and take them with you to finish.